Let's uh, speak to uh, Cole Palmer. Let's hear from Cole Palmer uh, because he returns to the Etihad for the first time since his £42 million move uh, to Chelsea. Will City feeling any regrets? He certainly won't be. He's looking forward to it. Yeah, very excited to be fair. It'll be, it'll be strange. Obviously playing at uh, playing at Sanford Bridge, but it's, I think yeah. going back to the Etihad will be will be even even stranger. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Twelve goals and nine assists from 28 appearances at Chelsea, including uh, two more on Monday night in the game against Crystal Palace. He helped turn the tide with Conor Gallagher when Chelsea was struggling to get going. Um, why, why do you think he might have regrets? You were sitting there in that little piece there, going, "He's got regrets." Of course he has. Well, of course you do, why? because when you the, the, the dream had to have been, didn't it, to be in that Man City team? That was what he set out to do. He decided he came, to leave, though. He came through the ranks. That was top of the list. He wanted a breakthrough. That was the dream to do so. He did that. Let's not forget, he scored a, a, a goal in the Super Cup final. He scored a goal in the cha- in the Community Shield final. Everything was looking fantastic for him. So, you know, when he finishes his career, I hope he's made the right call. But for now, you can't question his ability. You can't press question the quality that he has. Um, I'm pretty certain Man City would have found a way to, to get something from him. But when you see Foden now doing what he's doing, no one can, can say he's made the wrong call. But I just feel deep down... That was what he wanted. He wanted to be a Mountain City player, following in the footsteps of those great players that have been there now for the best part of 10 years. Why do you have to look back? Why can't you just look forward and think he's done a great job and he's excelled? I'm just explaining to you you maybe how I would have thought. I left Arsenal Football Club at a very young age and it didn't really work out. Um, Of course, it did when I went back. Um, So he took a gamble and Chelsea is not... I don't think there it's would you say when you look at the the comings and goings from that football club yeah. uh, the uncertainty there yeah. the instability he's, he's been put, he's been he's the one put, constant yes and somehow he's managed to rise to the very top well and can you imagine what he would be able to do once they stabilise the ship and they get fo- firing on full cylinders yeah but imagine what he could have done if he'd have stayed at City well I he mean, had I, been at City but Pep's not stupid he would have used him at some point so okay. the, the quality eventually rises to the surface doesn't but, it but, but how do you know that he would have got in the team one of the reasons he wanted to leave was because he was he getting in the team to play. getting in the team he wasn't playing week in week out he no, wanted because, to do that but it's very early in the day isn't it you know look at Foden it's taken what are we now four or five years of watching Foden and we've now realised you can't that. question him for having ambition and wanting to play on a week-to-week basis. He no, no, felt he should I, be a superstar in the Premier League. He I, thought he should be the fulcrum of a team. He's now doing that. In, in an ideal world for me, I think when a player comes through the ranks at a football club, you just don't want to lose him. And I just financial fair play now. We're seeing players and, you know, Mason Mount leaving Chelsea. He should be there. He's a Chelsea player. He's come through the ranks. Same same here with Palmer. He should be at Man City. But look, that's not happened. And I think that uh, Pochettino recognises he's got a wonderful talent. He's playing him now as a false nine. He can play uh, just off the front, which is probably, I think, if you think back to the goals he scored against Luton, weren't they magnificent goals? I thought he was better when he moved out just slightly to the right in the game against Crystal Palace. He was. In the first half he was playing as Well, the because false Conor Gallagher is a player that has to play off the front. Because yeah. he's the, he is a dynamo of an energy there. He goes and presses like no other player in the Premier League. And he can sit back and now he's demonstrating he can score goals. And he's actually showing now a level of um, composure in front of goal that we've not seen from, from Conor Gallagher, well, since he's played at the top level. It's now going to... But he's been given, hasn't he, that responsibility, the armband. And Pochettino is slowly picking out who he can rely upon. The, the midfield now is, is starting to produce and play the way that he, he wants. But I don't see... I don't see anything other than a City win. Uh, you know, it might have to be something on the break. But the, the, I think the revelation for me is is when you look at um, De Bruyne or De Brilliant, as um, we were talking about earlier, uh, this guy has been out injured. We with... weren't talking about that. You were just saying to me that I should bring that into well, my Well, you were commentary. a bit of a wordsmith, so I thought you'd have come up with that. And I, and, and I said, no, because it sounds rubbish. And you've been talking about it ever since. Well, he is, but is he not brilliant? Yeah, he is, but you don't have to go around calling him But you know De what brilliant. makes him even more brilliant? <laughs> Everyone it, it, laughed at you when you I don't said care what, that. I don't care what they said or what they did. <laughs> and I, still I, come my out eyes, with it. My eyes do not lie. And this guy coming in, the game against Newcastle, 75 minutes comes on, goal, assist. And do you know what's interesting? I thought that he worked from a picture book, a picture book that only he could read and see. But now I'm seeing Foden reading the same picture book. And it's unbelievable to see the two of them linking for the first goal in mid- midweek against Copenhagen, the, the lovely pass finish into the corner. And then the ret- returning the compliment when he ret- reverses the ball for Foden. I mean, this is top level. But Foden now, he's seeing that picture. 
And he's, he's, he's a first helicopter view of the better, game. That he operates in those tiny spaces in between the lines. He makes those movements that other players don't see. He connects the play so brilliantly. Mm. And his finishing, I thought, against Brentford was it was terrific. He's in the really. zone. Yeah. And, and, and it's the speed of everything, the touch. You know, he's like uh, receiving the ball on the back foot now. Sometimes I thought Did he used to take Did you see the game on Tuesday night? They played against Copenhagen. The yes. third goal that they scored was terrific, wasn't it? Well, that's the one I was talking about when he said, I said about how he returned the compliment for, uh, because obviously Foden set up the first goal and then De Bruyne waits and waits and waits and returns it. But the, ro- the run from Foden is because he's reading from the same picture book. It's, it's top, top level. And it's one of those where I think actually what Pep wants is you, when top players play with other top players, it then starts to rub off on them. And you don't see this often. Because Foden, Foden is a wonderful talent, but now he knows where to move. His special, special awareness now is much, much better when he first came to the scene. Can I ask you about Chelsea just very quickly? Do you think that they are getting better or are they still the great pretenders? Does that, can you see the green shoots of recovery or is there still that inconsistency? Because even in the game on Monday night, they were a completely different first half and second half. They were inconsistent in one game. They, they went to Aston Villa, played really well. Best game of the season. Changed one season. player for Monday night and were completely different. I do. I, I. I don't think they're out of the. You know, out of the woods yet in terms of their performances. Um, they did draw though, didn't they? Four four with Man City at home just a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be one of those games where something could turn up for them. But it kind of like you know, this needs to be the game, doesn't it? Where everyone goes. Do you know what? They've turned the corner now. We firmly believe. We've well, got two it. big games actually. This one this weekend, and then next weekend the Carabao Cup final, which is going to be absolutely huge live on Talksport. Yeah. Um, it's it's in there. The players are starting to produce, but I still feel they just don't have anyone who can put the ball away to any really regular effect at the top of their team. Uh, only side in English football yet to drop points since Christmas are Manchester City. They won all six games up until this point. They won their last 11 in all competitions, scoring 32 goals. This is the task uh, which is uh, Chelsea's uh, to try and uh, upset this weekend. The size of the task that Chelsea are trying to to come up against. Um, they had lost back-to-back Premier League games before they went to Selhurst Park in the top division. So their inconsistency is certainly key. And no one wins at the Etihad Stadium, do they? No. Uh, and four of those wins, actually, from the last six games, two of them have been, have been against Palace. Not to pick on Palace. So, you know, there's no real consistency there from Chelsea. But we'll see. We'll see what they're You said they don't count because they're against Crystal Palace. No, I didn't say they didn't count. I said it's not, you know, let's just put it into perspective. And what's the perspective? Well, they're playing against a team that they feel they should beat. Right. And their record against uh, Palace is one of the best we've ever seen in the Premier 13 League. 13 wins in a row. It's rem- remarkable. So it, it go, gives you a le- equally. gives you a level of confidence. Yes, there you go. OK, well, I don't know how much confidence they'll have going into tomorrow's game, uh, but they take on Manchester City tomorrow at 5.30. We'll follow it keenly. Adrian Durham will take you around the grounds 2.30 uh, until 5.30 tomorrow. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.